you're listening to that gets my goat. Never again. Okay, folks. I'm Big Anklevich. This is Rish Outfield. And we're back with another round of talk on X-Men. First class? Oh, oh you wanted me you to say colon? You didn't even say colon. I can't, I can't, how did you resist? Well, the, I, yes, uh, X-Men <laughs> first class. We're back to talk about more on the X-Men first class, folks. All right. Did you see that Hugh Grant flick about a boy? Yeah. The kid was beast. Oh, yeah? Wow, he grew up a lot skinnier than I would have expected because that <laughs> yeah. kid was chubby in that he movie. Uh, so you had a bunch of bad guys and, well, like, Emma Frost is a fanboy. Everybody loves Emma Frost. They're fans <laughs> of the comics. She's really shined right. in the past decade or so. And uh, I don't know. I guess she had something to do. She had tits. Yeah. And that's what Emma Frost is. But yeah, I, I guess I wasn't particularly impressed with January Jones as Emma. Yeah, I wasn't either, sadly. I wanted it to be better than it was. And it wasn't terrible or anything. It just wasn't important. It would have been fine without her. And I, I think that was kind of the way uh, several of the characters were. They would have been fine with that. I mean, you know, Riptide or Az- what's his name? Azazel? Azazel. 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 You know, they were fine. I mean, they were just henchmen. They were like Toad and Sabretooth were in the first X-Men movie where they didn't really have much to do because they were just guys to fight. And that's fine, you know, that you've got to have guys to fight. And that's a good thing about the X-Men is there's plenty of guys that you can choose from. And sometimes they just pull them out for fun like they did with the blob in uh, Wolverine. But yeah, there's plenty of those and it's no big deal to just have guys to fight. But yeah, when they tried to make them characters but didn't really do enough with them, it seems like it would have been better had they not gone there. You know, you mentioned that training montage. It might have been cooler if they just focused more on this team. There was a few scenes here and there that were interesting, like the scene where they all made up their code Code names, names. and then they had their party, and they were all dancing around, and they blew up the statue. You know, the the team growing up seemed like, especially with the name like X-Men First Class, it seemed like it should have been more focused on them, that first class. Than it was, it, you know, the movie was really should have been called like X Men, Xavier, Magneto, and Mystique, the early days. They were the main characters, and the first class wasn't that important. Well, it's possible that there was an X Men first class script, and then when they said we'll go ahead with that, they decided to absorb as many elements from the Magneto script right. as they could, and so you get like a half and half. And I don't know, maybe it would have been stronger if we had gotten X-Men Origins Magneto and then an X-Men or- Origins First Class or X-Men First Class or whatever you want to call it and just start over. In an alternate universe, I guess that happened. We can say they had it better than us. It's difficult yeah. to say. What did you think of the two main guys, though? What did you think of James McAvoy as Xavier and Michael Fassbender as Magneto? I liked them both. I thought they were both really good. I especially liked uh, James McAvoy. I thought he was really good. Although the hand to the forehead thing, every time I thought was unnecessary. Would have been better if they had just done some kind of, I don't know, zoom in on his face for a second or I don't know what they could do to to make it obvious that he's doing his powers. But uh, at a certain point I started going, okay, with the hand to the forehead, you don't really need to do that, right? <laughs> Yeah, he would like purse his lips and do this. this yeah, place. put his finger on his forehead and go, okay, I'm concentrating. And oh, and now I've, I've got it. But uh, I guess he doesn't have a very visual power, so he's got to do something. I don't know. They could have done the big disembodied Xavier head like they do in the comics, though. <laughs> but he's communicating with you telepathically. That would be an interesting <laughs> idea. It might not work. What I thought was very interesting was that they sort of made... Xavier, like the the playboy fuck around, and Magneto was the serious, you know, all business kind of guy. You know, it's just funny when 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 Xavier is hitting on that chick with the different colored eyes at the very beginning, uh-huh. and he, you know, he's drinking from the big beer bong and stuff. It's like, wow, that Xavier has always seemed really, really humorless and really straight laced and 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 dull to me. It's very <laughs> interesting to see him with his hair down, so to speak. You can say that, I guess, he matured over the years and and, mm-hmm. and all that. but They did make him a more interesting character that way, though. 
He was the most uh, magnetic of the characters that were in the film, I would say. And yeah, Magneto was the humorless one. I guess that's good for a bad guy. It makes him less likable. <laughs> And that's what he's supposed to be because he's the bad guy and all he wants to do is kill. Wait, wait, wait. Do, do you see Magneto as the bad guy in this? No, but he was to become a bad guy, so he needed to be less fun, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. I guess. Well, what did you think of uh, Kevin Bacon as Sebastian Shaw? Well, Sebastian Shaw is a character that I don't really know a lot about. What is his actual... They, they All the Hellfire Club folks had names right and like emma was the white queen i think and he there was, was the a, black king it was a black king is what he was called okay i wasn't sure if they had that name or what it was i know there's a black queen as well yeah i don't know that character very well so i don't i didn't feel like you say you know you don't expect you don't worry about the fact that dumbledore is now harry's father you know it was it was fine for me for him to be whatever he was i liked uh kevin bacon as sebastian shaw I liked that the first scene was all in German. Yeah. And there a lot of Russian was in Russian. And then when they downshifted into English at the end, that bothered me because it came out of nowhere. They had set the precedent that the Russians spoke Russian. Yeah. And when suddenly they started speaking English one with another, I wondered why the shift had happened. I, it was one of those, did I just learn Russian all of a sudden? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. It was because Emma was there and she was using her mind powers to help you understand. All right. Well. <laughs> he picked me up with his mind powers and shook me like a dog. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I liked Kevin Bacon. I thought he was one of the, the fun parts of the film. It was cool to see him in there. Although, strangely, yeah, that first scene where he was talking in German, I had no idea that was Kevin Bacon. The freaking mustache and the glasses, I didn't see that at all. He might as well have been wearing like one of those Groucho Marx noses or something like that. I, I totally couldn't see through his disguise. So when I saw, when you see him later, when they jump forward to 66, I didn't realize that was the same, supposed to be the same guy at all. It wasn't until there there was a line that was said that uh, finally helped me realize, oh, that's the, that was the same guy. Holy crap. Huh. How did I not see that? That guy was Kevin Bacon? Kevin Bacon. It was cool to see Kevin Bacon in there. Now, you know, it'll make the... Kevin Bacon game a little easier to get the uh, X-Men people involved. Yes, it will. <laughs> I mean, basically, you can just do a Hugh Jackman. Yeah, there you go. I don't know. We, we were talking about during our walk of how many comic book films we've got this summer. And we didn't even mention Priest, which was based on a comic book and came and went. It looked like such a turd and it didn't make a dime. And so I feel justified in pronouncing <laughs> it a turd. But like I said earlier, I'm not qualified judge to judge it because I didn't see it. I'm glad I went to X-Men First Class. I was willing to like skip it and wait to, and read the reviews. And if people said it was worth seeing or I'd just go see it at the second run theater like I do all the superhero movies that I'm not interested in. I still feel like I owe it to to see it, you know, I've got to see Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer or whatever at some point so I can talk about it. But the only one I haven't seen on opening night was the 2000 X-Men. Yeah, I think also on our walk, we talked about the uh, theory that I have that you don't subscribe to, apparently, in any way. We, we mentioned the sequel effect. Um, when you have a film that's a sequel to uh, another set of films, like this, these X-Men, we, we've been calling them the five X-Men movies. And uh, one time I talked about, you know, X-Men 2 did well because X-Men 1 was a good film, so people were willing to go and see the second one. And X-Men 2 was really good, and so people were twice as willing to go and see the third one. And it had a huge opening numbers. It was like 130 million or something like that in its first weekend. And then it dropped off substantially because people didn't like it as much as they liked the other two. But they were still fairly willing to go and see Wolverine, which was basically the sequel to that. But they also didn't like that one. And I wonder if that has anything to do with the fact that X-Men First Class didn't do as well as uh, it could have. Had it been a sequel to a different, you know, in a different point in that series. Well, okay. Originally, the director for X-Men 3 was going to be Brian Singer. And then Warner said, would you like to take over Superman? Mm -hmm. And so he abandoned what he'd been working on with X-Men 3 and went to make Superman thinking that Fox would just hold X-Men for him. And they didn't. They're saying, you know, not only are we going to make it without you, we're going to open it 
opposite Superman Returns. F you. Uh, <laughs> so the person they hired to replace Brian Singer was Matthew Vaughn, the director of, well, Dragon. Layer Cake, who would go on to make Kick-Ass and Stardust and, and then eventually became the director of this, X-Men First Class. And Matthew Vaughn quit right before they were going to start shooting, moved back to England. And, and you know, there were conflicting reports. He just, he didn't want to do it. And so they hired Brett Ratner with seriously just like days before they were going to start. <laughs> and Brett Ratner made X-Men 3. And there's probably an alternate universe out there where Brian Singer made X-Men 3. There's an alternate universe out there where Matthew Vaughn made X-Men 3. Right. And it'd be very interesting to see those versions. Uh, we went to a panel with Brian Singer after X-Men came out. And somebody asked him, well, what was your X-Men 3 going to be like? And he talked a little bit about it. You know, it's like, well, it was made, it was the Dark Phoenix saga. You know, some of what ended up in The Last Stand was from my treatment. But he had had Sigourney Weaver cast as Emma Frost, who was going to be a contemporary of Xavier's and like an old flame, old love interest from their past that was going to come and is now a rival to Xavier. And... He talked a little bit about how he was going to do Dark Phoenix, and, and he wasn't too pleased with the way that Ratner had done it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, of course you're going to say that when the movie's not well received. If you were hired to direct Dark Knight and then you dropped out, you can't very well say, well, my Dark Knight would have been much better. <laughs> right. Uh, but, but, yeah, it's one of those things. In an alternate universe, X-Men 3 was made by Brian Singer, and it felt more like those first two movies. And who knows, you know, X-Men Origins Wolverine might have been a huge opener. And I, I don't know, they, there probably would have been an X-Men 4 after Brian Singer's X-Men 3. Yeah, I would think so. But he probably wouldn't have killed off all those characters because that's something that he said at that panel. Yeah. They said, well, would you consider coming back to doing X-Men 4? And he says, who's left? Who's still alive? Right. Yeah, that, that was a weird choice that they made to kill three or four of the major characters and depower some of the others, it was almost as if they said that this is it. We're not going to do any more films. But yet they still opened the door for Magneto to come back, for Xavier to come back. And mm -hmm. in that, yeah, th that's one of those things. You have to wonder what might have happened and, and if the way they've done it worked better or worse. And yeah, maybe if X-Men First Class had been a big hit, we would have seen a whole trilogy of first class movies and and you know what maybe we still will yeah it's possible but yeah all i know is that fox is not going to relinquish that license and right so they'll make another x-men film of some sort down the line and yeah i think they'll still make wolverine 2 at some point and they'll still make deadpool if they can now if, if uh, at the point that we're recording this green lantern hasn't come out yet and green lantern could be a huge hit if so, uh, Warner's is already ready to make Green Lantern 2. Their script has already been written. All it's waiting for is the opening grosses of Green Lantern 1. And in, in which case, I don't think there will be a Ryan Reynolds to do Deadpool. Right. But we don't know. Green Lantern could be a flop, man. I, I don't know. I have no idea. You know, X-Men didn't open all that well. And if people are tired of superhero movies, then Green Lantern is not going to do well. Yeah, but Thor's done all right, right? Yes, Thor's done much better than I think anybody could have anticipated at this point. And when we're recording this, it's almost done 200, and it's only been out for a month. Uh, by the time this airs, you know, it could be at 250, or I, I don't know. I, I hope people continue to go see Thor, like we were saying in the Thor episodes, so that the momentum is still there when Captain America comes out and people realize, hey, these are directly related. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's so cool. We'll see on that. I, I still have a ton of love for the X-Men characters. I'd like somebody to do Rogue right. I'd like certainly like to see Dark Phoenix done right. And, and I, I don't know how you can follow up X-Men First Class, but I will go. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like you said with the sequel rule. The sequel, what do you call it? I don't know that there's a... A name sequel, for it? Your sequel theory. Okay, sequel oh, theory. I, I liked X-Men First Class, so I will definitely go see X-Men First Class 2 if there is one. And you were before that, you were leaning towards, eh, maybe I won't bother with this first class. So, yes, yes I but I liked Wolverine. 
And I, I, will, I will go see Wolverine 2, and I hope that they can pull it off. See, the problem is that, uh, and, and, you know, I'll burn in hell for having said this, you can't really translate a comic book 100% to the cinema because they're different. Right, mediums. Mediums. I think media is actually the plural of Oh, medium. okay. The things that work in a comic book work because you are a comic book reader You've already accepted 90% of the stuff just by opening a comic book. You know, it's like, I know what comic books are. I know that they're going to be colorful costumes. I know that, you know, the violence isn't going to be gratuitous and all. There are certain things that you take for granted just opening a comic book Uh that you can't take for granted in a movie. And all their fear of what if somebody says the costumes are gay and all that stuff, that's probably a legitimate fear. You know, what if people laugh? What if people say, oh, that's lame, or oh, I'm not going to go see that, that's stupid. And I don't know, when you and I saw that Green Lantern trailer, my first inclination was, that is a cartoon. Yeah. And afterward, you said, geez, that just looks, looks like one of those CGI animated films. And I was yeah. like, wow, you and I were on the exact same page. And if somebody sees the first trailer for Amazing Spider-Man, and they're like, wow, he looks like a friggin' dork, you can bet your ass that the Sony execs are going to be like, oh man, when we do our reshoots next month, let's reshoot those three scenes where the focus group said he looked like a dork. You know what I mean? Spider-Man is a dork. <laughs> I don't know. We, we will see what the future holds. And I don't think we've talked nearly as long about this as we did about Thor, but maybe I'm wrong. And we'll be talking about Green Lantern. Uh, I'm assuming you and I are going to go see that, right? Yeah, I think that was our plan. The next one that we'll get together and see is going to be that one. But we'll keep talking about them as the summer goes on. I think this has been a good summer for movies. Summer hasn't actually started yet, even, you know. Die. <laughs> that year of 2008 when we got Iron Man and Dark Knight and Incredible Hulk, I liked Dark Knight and Iron Man. And it was like, hey, there's room in a summer for two really, really good superhero movies. And I think that that's how we've been. I mean, I really like Thor. I really liked X-Men First Class. I look forward to really liking Green Lantern yeah. and Captain America. Yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. It's not like there's a limit on good movies. You can only have so many and then you're out. Yeah, thank goodness. It's not like you can choose one movie this summer yeah. to see, although we talked about that. And if you had to, you know, what would you choose? We, we luckily are able to go see as many movies as we want, and I think that's kind of cool. Yes, it is. All, All right, right, so we will leave you. Thank you for listening. I've been Rich Alfield. And I've been Big Anklevich. See you later. Good night. That Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. That'll teach you. <laughs>